BYU Sports Nation, Jerem Jordan, Dave McCann, and the Deputy, Deputy Athletic Director, Brian Santiago, now joins us in studio. What's up, Brian? How you doing, man? Hey, great to be here. Good to see you, Jerem. Dave. Happy summer. It's a great summer. <laughs> it's a great summer. Summer's always great. Summer is great. July seems to be the slow time of year for BYU Athletics, but it uh, feels like we're right around the corner from all the stuff, right? Uh, Notre Dame ticket info coming out, which we'll talk to you about in a moment, but it's we're almost there, man. No, we're almost there, and usually July is pretty slow, but it's been hopping. I think everybody's ramping up for the Big 12. There's a lot going on and certainly football's right around the corner so we're excited. And important to note that your golf game is well under par so nice uh, job. It should be. <laughs> nice job. It should be. Nice and tan and warm and <laughs> July is as it should be. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay right. let's talk about this uh, Notre Dame and BYU in Vegas. What an incredible opportunity to play in that stadium again. The Cougar fans that went to this game last year had an experience. That was one of the best showings ever. I was there Saturday for a soccer game, and I was like, oh, yeah, this place is amazing. So it comes out. It's a Notre Dame home game. We've known this, but I think some fans maybe forgot that Notre Dame's kind of dictating the situation here. So what, what should fans know about the opportunity that is the chance to go to this game and that it's not a BYU run game here? Yeah, Jaron, first of all, and Dave, it's incredible to be playing Notre Dame on one of the biggest stages, right? It couldn't be any better in Las Vegas, but it is part of their Shamrock series. So it's a home game. They control pretty much everything about the game. Uh, but for us, behind the scenes, what Tom Homo has done to actually get this game to come to fruition uh, has been incredible in itself. So we're, we get to play on the biggest stage and uh, they've been generous to a point to, uh, to give us an allotment of tickets and certainly it's created quite a buzz uh, for BYU fans and Notre Dame fans. We heard Notre Dame's going to have a lottery. Uh, it's, it's a lottery ticket for their fan base. And so we're excited that we do have an allotment of tickets, and we're going to try to get as many of our Cougar faithful there as possible. Those tickets go on sale tomorrow. Cougar Club yeah. gets three days to have at them, and then the general public, if there's anything left, uh, on Friday. How many tickets are in this pile? Is there 10,000, 15,000? <laughs> you know, I'd love to give you an exact number. <laughs> Uh, we have a limited number of tickets. They've given us some sections to work from. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put them on sale by priority. Uh, one thing that you mentioned, Jerem, that's super important for Cougar fans to know is Notre Dame controls the price of the ticket. So the ticket pricing is pretty aggressive. Yeah, we saw uh, the last row, a ticket for the last row would like around 195 bucks. Yeah, so the tickets in the lower sections are going to be four to $500. Yeah. Mm. Uh, tickets in the club section are right about the same. So. Uh, we're going to try to uh, put a limited number available for our fan base, allow our, our uh, faithful to, to get access to the tickets, but we're, we're putting a limit on the number of tickets each person can buy so we can get as many as possible in the, in the stadium. It's going to be fantastic, but uh, certainly something that uh, Cougar fans should look forward to. We wish it was an even split. Notre Dame's going to dictate how they want to do it. If BYU played Arizona and ran the deal, you'd give Arizona just a, f a handful. You know, we'd be generous, but you'd want it to be... Probably a few less. A certain way, right? <laughs> so I get it from that standpoint. But let's talk about this. Originally, you know, there was a two-for-one that was played in the early 2000s, or uh, 2010s. Then there was a two-for-one. We've been waiting for that home game for a long time. Tom's asked every year about it. We finally have an answer. Was there any opportunity to play home game in Provo, or was it Vegas or nothing with Notre Dame? Yeah, I think in, in, in the spirit of trying to make the game come to fruition, uh, the option was, through a lot of years of negotiation, to play the game in Vegas. And certainly, we've shown unbelievable in Vegas. Cougar Nation has come out in droves, uh, great passion. That game last year against Arizona, it was incredible to see the entire stadium, yep. more 50, or less, essentially 80-20, it felt like, yeah. Of BYU yeah. uh, Cougar Nation. So the fact that the game came to fruition, it's in Vegas, uh, is a huge bonus for us because I think it was headed to the direction of, especially with all the change going on in college athletics, that we play the game now in Vegas or, or maybe not, not get a, a home game. So I, I again, uh, a lot of times people think it's pretty simple to make sure that these games happen. Uh, what Tom's done to make sure that the relationship with Notre Dame was such that they wanted to play the game, were willing to pay the, play the game, it's a huge benefit for BYU. Huge benefit 
And uh, we're just grateful that they were as generous as they were with the ticket allotment. Tennessee bought out the game mm -hmm. to Provo last, for next year, mm -hmm. and it was $2 million bucks. And, and uh, as a state institution, everybody knew the details. Um, as opposed to buying out this, this home game that was in the original contract, uh, is it safe to assume that, one, this is a Notre Dame home game, so they're paying BYU to come play there? And are they paying enough that would offset a buyout so it's a wash in the end? Uh, Dave, affirmative. It's, it's actually very beneficial for us financially to play this game in Las Vegas. Notre Dame's been very generous to us, and we're getting the game. Uh, so in our estimation, and that's why I give kudos to Tom, in our estimation, it's, it is kind of a double benefit for us. Mm. Uh, financially very viable for us to go play the game. Notre Dame very generous, and we're actually playing the game uh, in, a, in a place where we're very comfortable playing. Okay, boom, boom. I like it. Because uh, if it was just bought out and you got the money, but you don't play the game, yes, you get the one, but it sounds like you got both. Which we got right? both. That's, that's awesome. Anytime talking... you get a win-win in Vegas, it's a win-win. Hey, it's usually a, it's a win -win. rarely it's does that happen, let alone for uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There. Okay. Fantastic. We're talking to Deputy Athletic Director Brian Santiago. So a lot of realignment news, right, yeah. with USC and UCLA and the shift there. Um, what what? What uh, you know? Do you feel about the movement there, and and, and the Big Twelve and the Pac-12 and whatnot uh, relative to what might happen this year or next year in the years to come as all of this happens? First of all, Jeremy, I think it's the most exciting time maybe in the history of BYU athletics. We've we've all dreamt about the day that we could uh, be in the Power Five conference uh, to be positioned in the Big Twelve with the momentum of where things are going right now in the landscape. Uh, we feel very, very good about where we're at partnering with the Big 12. Certainly the change, there's a lot out there. You've heard a lot of people say, hey, there are a lot of moving parts and everybody's speaking confidently about something they barely understand. <laughs> it's yeah. the way I look at it. I think what we need to do is make sure that we're great partners with the Big 12 moving forward. Uh, certainly there's gonna be some shifts but uh, we're in a great spot, and uh, we're focused on controlling the controllables, make sure that our teams are prepared for what's to come in the fall of 2023, because we all know that the level day in and day out is gonna take a huge step up, and uh, we're just trying to make sure we're prepared for that. All right, I'm gonna go right to the heart on this question. Okay. Let's say you have a vote. Hmm. Do you vote to bring Utah into the Big 12? I vote to do whatever's very, very best for the Big 12 moving forward. It gives us the most uh, national viability. Uh, we want to be nationally relevant in every way in the Big 12. And uh, certainly, uh, if, if that's part of the equation and it makes the Big 12 stronger, let's go. Uh, we all know what the natural rivalry is. Uh, we actually have a great relationship with their athletic administration. Uh, it's a very, very positive relationship uh, moving forward. And so, however the Big 12 shakes out, I think it's the very best for us to be where we're at. And uh, if Utah's part of that, great. I know a lot of Cougar Nation might not love that, but we need to do... There's a lot that would. Uh, I, I just think that Utah and BYU, uh, obviously with the history, uh, with where things are going, the power, the powerful teams that we have, uh, I think it could be a real positive. And so I see it as something that would only make the league stronger. And I'd love to see the game insured every year. If, that's, if they're in the same league... You're going to play every year in football, I would imagine. Why not? Everybody knows what those games meant for all of those years at the yeah. end of the season. Everything on the line. Uh, it certainly adds to the great rivalry. And we have, we have respect for the University of Utah. They, look what they just did this last year. So you have to give them credit. When you got the phone call or first heard that USC and UCLA were joining the Big Ten, and they did so in about five hours, how surprised were you? After the Oklahoma, Texas thing from a year ago, which opened the door for, for BYU, and then here comes this other bombshell. Mind-boggling, yeah. Dave. I, I was, for me, it's hard to fathom the logistical challenges that it's going to create for UCLA and USC to play in the Big Ten. Uh, football, not so much, right? We, we get, we've been independent. We get on planes. It's six times a year. Yeah. But when you start talking about the number of sports both those schools have, the amount of times that they're going cross-country almost weekly is, is a little bit mind-boggling. Certainly from a financial standpoint, from a power standpoint, you can understand the, the thinking, 
but from a logistical standpoint, it seemed a little, it seemed like a stretch. It'll, it'll be interesting politically to see how it plays out. Right. I mean, you're already hearing a lot of rumblings out of California and yep. what this means and who's left behind. But uh, again, to go back to, I think there's great strength in the Big 12. There's great confidence in the Big 12 moving forward. And I think this is going to play out in a great way for the Big 12 and hopefully for BYU. Well, certainly it's an exciting time given the way the whole athletic department performed this last year. Maybe the best year in BYU athletics ever. Yeah. It was amazing. One more year and then in the Big 12. Yeah. Brian, we appreciate the time, man. Best of luck on the links. I know you're playing today. <laughs> well, we'll get out there and see if we can make <laughs> that thing go in. The hole does look this big, though, so that's a good <laughs> thing. We'll watch for you on the Golf Channel later okay. tonight. All Thanks, right. Brian. Coming up.